This talk is going to cover um, how to manage users and groups uh, in GeoShape. For more information on GeoShape, go to geoshape.org. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open the um, landing page for GeoShape. Uh, here, I'm already logged in, um, as you can see in the upper right corner. If you want to create um, other users, we actually have to go to the admin page for GeoNode, um, which is really a Django admin page. And um, here we're going to go down and uh, search for users, their people. I'll, I can click there and you can see we have a list of all the users currently in the system. Uh, we're go ahead and click uh, add new user. Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and make a user called user1 and uh, we can set a password for this particular user. All right. Confirm it. And I'm going to go ahead and click save and continue editing. Even if you hit save, it's just going to create a user with no additional information, um, which uh, it's not preferred. And in fact, to use the GeoGig capabilities, you have to at the very least have the uh, have the more information about the user, uh, which is uh, do you want to have their uh, first name? So let's go ahead and I'll just put my first name here, um, and then we're going to say uh, let's go ahead and say text. Uh, all right, and uh, so these are the basic information that we're typing in. Uh, you can um, you can reset password by coming here and change the user's password. Um, and uh, let's see. So here in the permission section, um, I'm listed as an active user. We have staff and super user status. Staff user uh, essentially allows the allows this particular user to come in and use this admin page to do the same operation we're doing here and add other users. Uh, which in this particular case, uh, let's go ahead and say that we'll exclude, uh, well, we won't put a staff status on there. And uh, for super user is also another status where um, the, you can actually have uh, all the permissions without explicitly them being assigned. Or you can be more fine-grained control and choose uh, what particular uh, permissions uh, can be set or are set for this particular user. So, Let's go ahead and create this user without any uh, special um, permissions. We'll have the default one. So I'll go ahead and say save here. But the important things is that we specified the username uh, and password. So uh, we'll come here in um, Mac and Geo Shape and I'll go ahead and log out here. And I'm going to log back in as user one. So um, So now I'm user one. Uh, as you can see, user one now doesn't have a profile information, but uh, each user can go uh, to their profile and add more information uh, as need be. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go back to um, to being an admin user. Then I'll go to uh, people. Well, actually, let's go ahead and go to groups. I'm going to create a group called uh, Exercise One. Um, okay, well, we'll call it Exercise Two. Um, if there's a logo, you could put, you could specify it here. You can uh, specify some uh, description here. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and if you have a, if there's already a mailing list or a, a for this particular group, you can enter it here. Um, and let's go ahead and say create here. The, the trick here, it could, is this group public or private, uh, meaning invite only? Let's go ahead and make this a private uh, user group, the exercise two. Uh, so here, we're going to say create. Um, okay. All right. So, oh, description can't be empty. So we're going to say, um, okay. 
All right, now we have um, created a group. So if I go to groups, you'll see that we have two groups. One is called PKO group. Um, the other one is called exercise two. I'm going to go ahead and open up exercise two. Uh, as the creator, um, I'm, already, uh, I'm, a, I'm already a member of this. So let's go ahead and say uh, edit uh, manage group members. And we're going to say we want to go ahead and add a group member. So under all, we could see that there is a uh, Cyrus M as a manager already uh, of this particular group. Let's go ahead and um, add somebody else. So here I'm going to say user one, okay? And we're going to add user one to this group. All right, user one is here now. And um, if you want, we can go back, give them a manager role. That way they can uh, modify the group itself. Otherwise, um, let's go ahead and um, manage group members and I will add a few more uh, here. Let's say uh, some generic uh, users. So we have two users here. All right, now we've created our group. Uh, we have created a, uh, also a new user we've made that we have here. So let's go ahead and put these groups to use. So if I go under um, maps or even layers for that matter uh, any uploaded layer let's take this OCHA security incidents for example you could specify uh, who has access to this um, particular layer and under permissions here on the right side you could say alright who can view this right now we we'll say anyone uh, could see uh, could, could see this so and also we have we can edit. These are probably the two more important uh, fields when it comes to permissions. Who can view the layer and then who can edit it. So I will say that anyone can view it. However, only uh, group exercise two can actually edit this. And um, okay, so so that's good. And uh, let's go ahead and apply our changes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go to people again. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and go to the admin page. I'll go to admin, and we'll add a third user. Okay. Okay, so we can say add. I'm going to make user two. All right. And save and continue editing. Uh, we'll say okay, and we'll leave uh, no special permissions for this particular user. Let's go ahead and save. So now we actually have. Uh, we have two users here that we've created. All right, so um, so what we have done is user one is part of a particular group. So if I go ahead and let's log out. And I'm going to log in as user one. Okay. If I go to layers, I'm going to see all these public layers that have uh, that have been uploaded. Um, I have as a, as a part of as a member of Exercise Two group. I have uh, permissions to view um, see information about these, but also I can edit this particular layer. And um, so I have. I can actually both view this layer and make changes to it. So now let's go ahead and log out as user one, and we're going to log out as login as user two. Okay. Now we'll go to layers. Okay, I can still see uh, all the public layers, and uh, now I. Have, uh, let's 
then I zoom to all the data in this particular layer. So I can view this layer, but if you notice, is, uh, notice this pencil on this particular layer is actually grayed out, meaning I don't have permissions to make any changes to this layer. I could select the feature, uh, but there are missing buttons here. I cannot edit the geometry or edit the attributes. So this is an example of uh, putting permissions on layers. Um, using a group, you could individually uh, put layers on permission, but it's best to separate out, separate out your groups and uh, your uh, users in different groups. Uh, permissions hold for maps as well. Uh, for every map, uh, you can um, you can actually ad adjust permissions on the layer. But right here, when I came to the map screen, I can't see the uh, options for adjusting permissions. That's because I'm user two, and I'm not. Uh, allowed to make changes uh, to map one. So if I let's go ahead and log out and log back in as a uh, admin user um, or a person that actually has permissions on that particular layer, um, I can when I come back here, you can see that it say change permissions and uh, who can um, let's see who can view the map. All right, that's cool. Who can manage it, uh, change permissions, etc. So. Um, as a person who uploaded the layer and with admin privileges I uh, um, already will be able to do that but let's go ahead and say now we want um, exercise two uh, members actually be able to make a change here so um, to this slide particular layer. so I'm going to log out again I'm going to come back at as user one okay Go to maps. So go to details, and you can see now. The first time around, I was not able to make any uh, changes to this uh, particular map, but uh, now I have permissions to make that change. And uh, if I was to, uh, you know, go ahead, and I can just view the map, and uh, user one had read and write permissions. If I was user two. Um, I again still wouldn't have permission to uh, change the layer. Um, but that uh, concludes the section on creating users and uh, creating groups and actually utilizing the permissions there. So, very good. Thank you for watching.